Hey, I'm Scott Purdue. This is a video that I shot years ago when I used an extra 300L teaching aerobatics and upset recovery techniques. I was interested in seeing how different flight control movements affected the spin. Accelerated spins exhibit increased yaw rates, flutter pitch attitudes, and things like that. And I wanted to see how that worked. Remember, this was shot in the days before GoPro and HD. Plus, I no longer have an extra 300, so no excuses. Here's the setup. I'm only going to do left spins and will not change configuration until the spin is established. There are three things to look for. Pitch attitudes, pitch and roll oscillations, and yaw rate. You can see the yaw rate by how fast the ground rushes to the right. So, don't get sick on me now, okay? First is a normal spin. I'll stall the airplane and then push full left rudder. I'll stabilize the spin with full aft stick, neutral ailerons, and then full left rudder into the spin. You'll see the nose drop, slice to the left, and the airplane seems to go on its back and begin auto rotation. Fairly stable with 60 to 70 degrees nose lower, so. Recovery is full rudder opposite the spin, stick just forward to neutral, out of the rudder, and recover from the dive. Next up is spin in spin aileron. The cool thing is, is this, this increases the roll rate. The airplane almost wants to roll out of the spin. In fact, this and differential power is the way to recover from a multi-engine spin, not uh, flight tested. In-spin aileron is an anti-yaw input, and the yaw rate does slow down. Otherwise, it looks very much like a normal spin. Next, we have a spin without spin aileron. This is a pro-yaw input, and the yaw rate is visibly faster with the nose position oscillating in pitch. We're getting into gyroscopic effects now. And remember the p-factor with the propeller? Well, this gyro is a gyroscopic effect because of the force applied by the aileron and the rotation of the airplane about its vertical axis. It's really very, very cool. I just spoke a second ago. The FAA actually doesn't require spin testing for twins. Then we add four stick to the equation. Again, this is a gyroscopic effect. The nose rises and the yaw rate is noticeably slower. One of the neatest things happening here is the additive nature of multiple gyroscopic inputs. Forward stick brings the nose up very close to the horizon and results in a very stable rotation profile. Now we're really gonna have fun. We're gonna add, we're gonna do outspin later on, forward stick, and we're gonna add power. What do you think is gonna happen? Anyone? 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 Finally, with power, adding yet another gyroscopic effect that is pro-spin, the nose comes up to about 15 degrees nose low, and the airplane develops a very stable pitch and roll profile with a very flat attitude. This is the dreaded flat spin. Fortunately, we're not headed out to sea today. This was fun. Later, we're gonna get into more depth as to the whys of all this, but right now, the takeaway is that to safely recover from a spin, you must take out all pro spin controls. The stick must be full aft, the aileron's neutral, and the power must be at idle. Unless you're a professional, don't try this at home. But if it happens to you by accident, remember, idle, neutral, aft, push on the hard rudder, neutralize when the yaw stops, and recover from the dive. Y'all be careful out there. Thanks for watching, and if you think I've earned it, hit the subscribe bell so you won't miss the next video. See you next time on Flywire.